prepare to experience the strongest radio allowable by law. Secrets will be revealed. Myths Myths dispelled. dispelled. From the studio gym where excuses never apply. It's Superhuman Radio with your host, Carl Lenore. This is Science for Humans with Dr. Jeff Galini. Hey, Dr. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you, Carl? Fantastic, fantastic. So isn't this funny? Um, we always thought that everything you and I were going to talk about on Science for Humans was going to be science-based, you know? And people are sending emails in to you at an outstanding number asking you to talk more about your training. Everybody wants you to reveal the secrets of Muscle Beach back in the day during the golden era of bodybuilding, which you were one of the participants of. Were you? Are you astonished by that? You know, I am. I mean, for the, for this most of this year, we've been talking about, <clears throat> you know, science, internal type things. And when we, when I got that email and we talked about the leg workout, boy, oh boy, I mean, yeah, the question has been coming in. Everyone wants to know the secret. And, you know, one of the things I realized as you really go and, you know, look in magazines or you even look on interviews, um, that are on the interview, uh, internet, no one really tells you what to do. You know, you can watch, uh, you know, Ronnie Coleman's leg workout, but I don't know. They really don't get into telling someone, you know, what the secrets are. Right. So I think that's why people are intrigued uh, is that, hey, we're open here. Well, you know, there you, is no secrets, right? Your advice on leg training tra- changed my leg training. I now do uh, uh, curls. Uh, uh, what do they call them? Uh, hamstring curls first to nice. hit that muscle. And you know what? I've already am seeing a difference because I have been lacking. I've got great front leg development, but my hamstrings have never been popping. Now they're starting to look like they're gonna they're gonna hang someday. Yeah, and I think, you know, because there's too much information, you know, people get confused about weight training, you know, and you gotta go back to the basics. I mean, you gotta work the basic exercises, you know, that help to develop those different um parts to that muscle group. Um, you just can't do all the sexy things. Uh, you know, we always talk about the guys in the gym that just do upper body. They do no legs at all. You know, part of lifting is being healthy. Even if you're not a competitive bodybuilder or, you know, physique or bikini, you know, it's about being health- healthy. And to be healthy, you've got to work all the muscle parts or something is going to give sooner right. or later. Right. Okay. So let's jump right into it. What's the secret about your back workout? You obviously uh, have some, you had great back development, which is evidenced by some of the pictures that are still on the internet of you. First of all, you know, back is probably one of the most important things uh, that we want to train because those are normally the things that go out on people, and it's because their backs are weak. You know, we talk about core training. No, we're going to talk about back. It's a huge muscle. So the first thing is I like to do wide grip pull-ups. Now, this is old school, but I'm telling you, there's nothing better for building width than pull-ups. And most people can't even do a pull-up. And you would think people who had a lot of muscle could do pull-ups. But what that tells you is you are not working those particular muscles that give you that wide lat spread. And if you can't do it by yourself, get someone to get behind you, put your uh, legs up, and push off, you know, until you can do them on your own. Five sets, you know, 10, 15, 20 reps. Um, And when you get to the point where that is easy, then you can take a, a dumbbell you know, and put it between your legs, you know, five, 10 pounds, or they make these belts that you can actually uh, add weight to. Right. But I always use this kind of uh, as the starting. It really helped uh, me to develop the width of my back um, before I started to doing that. So I like that over, you know, pull downs, um, more isolate. When you get to the top, you know, again, you're squeezing, you're controlled, you're not kicking with your feet. Um, Everything that you do for back needs to be controlled. So, you know, it's interesting because, the thing that jumps out at me about your approach is you look at what needs to be worked the most and you prioritize that as the first movement, huh? Absolutely. And for me, you know, I needed a wider back. So that was my, my first movement. And that typically, when you look at a lot of guys and gals, you know, their, their inner back, so to say, is more developed and they have no lats or no outer back. 
And it's because they neglect that or they do it last. So let's look at the thing that provides the most illusion, which is that with. And like I said, the best way is to start with those pull-ups. Now, a lot of people go, oh, it's going to take away from, you know, some other lift. No, you don't look at a workout like that. You know, you're going to use as much weight as you can for that day. It isn't about maxing out. It's about working that muscle. So then the next movement um, that I like to move on to. Now, this is kind of, again, working working with um, is a bent over row, but you're going to go wide grip. So you're going to put your hands out as wide as you can. You're going to get up on something, uh, whether you put down a couple 45-pound weights. Uh, we used to have uh, boards that were made that we could actually get up. This way you get a nice stretch. So when you bend down, um, you know, you have to work to hit the ground. You're up maybe five, six inches. Um, again, I like to go wide, and I keep about the five sets. And again, you know, that 10 to 15 rep is the building. You know, we aren't looking to do how much we can do in one or two. And again, a lot of guys and gals that do better over rows, um, they lift their back up. They're, they're struggling. They're jerking. You are not working that back motion. Uh, it has to be controlled in order to really emphasize on is that it important, back. Is it important to stay completely parallel to the ground when you do this is when people start going heavier and heavier, they have the tendency to start to stand up more because your lower back can't keep you where you want. Is it important to stay parallel to the ground? It is. You know, I mean, obviously, when you start putting a little more weight on there, you might lose a little bit of that parallelness. But again, you know, we got to get out of the, the realm of wanting to outdo everybody in weights. There'd be some workouts where I would come in that I would literally put a 25 pound p- plate on each side. And I could burn that muscle without going heavy. And then there are other times where, you know, I would work up to 315. Um, but it depends on how I felt that day. You know, every day didn't have to be the maximum weight because some days I just couldn't lift that much weight. And other days you feel really good. So, again, it's more about the control. Um, then I like to move now toward the, the, the middle of the back. And a lot of people who have seen some of my pictures and videos um, always comment on, you know, my lower back and that middle back, I mean, it was so deep that you could put a Coke can and lose it in the middle of my back, you know. Um, but now I like to go close grip. Um, I would get a bench and pull it up to the machine where you would do pull downs and you would use one of the little angled uh, bars and I would actually do them on an incline. So instead of pulling straight, I'm pulling more of an incline. And again, you know, squeezing as I get down, um, control back up, you know, 10 to 15 reps, um, five sets. And again, you know, as heavy as you can, start out light, work your way up. And that starts to work that, that middle of that back area. Those were my three basic um, movements that really helped me to develop my back. Now, some of the movements that I would rotate, um, sometimes I would do instead of the bent over rows, I would do dumbbell rows, which again is, is the exact same uh, exercise, only you're using one arm at a time. Uh, sometimes when people do a lot of barbell uh, movements, their dominant side, they will tend to have more growth than their other side. So by going to bar, uh, dumbbells, um, it would help me in the event that I saw maybe my right side, because I was right side uh, handed, was developing a little bit more. So by using those dumbbells, um, I would put my knee on a bench and literally same type of movement, um, dumbbell down to the floor, squeeze up, squeeze down. Um, you could you could do the, the same type of movement. So it's, these are all basically rowing movements at this point in time. Absolutely. You know, these are pulling movements. Um, they develop every different, uh, part of that back. So now, you know, most people would be done with their workout and, uh, guess what I would finish? Well, not really finish, but my next movement would be deadlifts. <laughs> really? But now a lot of people consider the deadlift a lower body movement. It is an overall body movement. I did it on back day. You know, again, from my powerlifting days, you know, Deadlifts were always part of a back movement. Sure, it works legs. It works just about every movement. Um, but if you want that thickness, deadlifts are how you're going to get thick. Um, always wear a weightlifting belt. Too many of these young people 
don't wear belts and too many of them are having back surgeries in their mid twenties because they have pulled a disc or something, you know, for an investment of, you know, $25 for a weight belt. Um, it's a preconceived notion that wearing a weight belt, you're going to not, you know, put emphasis on your lower erectors. That's, that, that is rubbish. You know, a uh, weight belt is a preventative, uh, means. So when you're deadlifting, you know, you're going to use heavier weight. Now, um, I preferred the uh, conventional deadlift versus uh, what what we used to call the sumo deadlift. And again, it's kind of a preference. But again, from my powerlifting days, we did a conventional deadlift. The difference is, is when I powerlifted, I would put one hand under and one hand over. Um, when I started bodybuilding, I went to two hands over. Because again, I was finding I was getting uh, a little bit of lopsidedness um, up through my my traps and my upper back, depending on you know on that underhand um, versus that overhand. Right. And I always wore and I always use straps. You know, I wasn't too. This proud is a really good point. That. No, this is a really good point because you're training your back, not your grip, right? And a lot of times your grip will right. give out before your back will give out. So when you're training your back, you should use straps. You know, and I think, I don't know where this all came about, you know, where people just quit using tools that help you control the weight. Um, you know, lifting straps, uh, if folks, if you guys aren't familiar with them, um, they're just a piece of cloth that kind of hook around your arm and there's a technique to rolling them around the bar. And what it enables you to do is to not grip that bar is to hold on. Because if you're concentrating and you're worrying about losing the grip, you aren't concentrating on the muscle. Your brain, your mind should be focused inside that muscle, and that's all you should be thinking about. You shouldn't be thinking about how this is uh, hurting your biceps or, or something else. You should be concentrating. And with a deadlift, strict form is the most important. This isn't a bent over row movement. Um, you want to squat down just like you're sitting in a chair and you want to pick a spot toward the ceiling. You want to keep your head up. You're going to bring that bar straight up your knees and up your thighs, and that should be the movement, the same as if you were to go sit down in a chair. Um, you come all the way down to the floor. You don't bounce the weight. You don't drop it and let it go. It's a fluid movement. And, again, we're doing, you know, this 10 to 15 reps because that's how you really – uh, build muscle and deadlifts will, uh, will really give you that thick back. Um, when I first went to California, no one deadlift, Carl. Really? So I quit doing it. And, you know, going from more of a power lifter look, trying to get into a bodybuilding look, obviously I had a lot of things I had to do. So I started to do, you know, these wider things, um, that I saw the other guys doing. Um, and I noticed I started to get more of that thin look and I wanted that thick look. So I thought, wait a minute. You know, I'm going to go back deadlifting. And it took me about maybe uh, four or five months. And people are already noticing uh, how thick I was getting. And pretty soon, everybody's deadlifting at Gold's Gym, you know, where no one even knew what a deadlift was. You, um, I, want to, I want to take a break. Um, you haven't mentioned t things like T-bar rows, which are very, very popular in gyms that have that type of equipment. I'd like to get your opinion on that and also what other accessory movements uh, are important for things like the rear delts, which is part of the back, right? Sure. All right, so let's do this. Let's take one quick commercial break. We'll be right back with Dr. Jeff's back workout. You're listening to Science for Humans. It is science to build muscle efficiently. Stay tuned. How to properly use carbohydrates to ignite your performance in the field and in the gym? You will now, thanks to this free book by EFX Sports. The Carb User's Guide for Maximum Performance reveals why omitting carbohydrates from your diet can totally crush your gains. Ever wonder how many grams you need for your specific sport? Not anymore. We give you the critical number you need to dominate your competition. You'll even discover the super carb that's taking the athletic world by storm. You must try it to believe it. Go to getcarbolin.com forward slash carb guide today and get your copy absolutely free. Once again, it's G-E-T-K-A-R-B-O-L-Y-N dot com forward slash C-A-R-B-G-U-I-D-E. Ever feel like you want something? 
something crunchy? From the company that gave us the Quest Protein Bar now comes the Quest High Protein Potato Chips with 21 grams of high quality protein and only 5 grams of carbs and no artificial ingredients. Just like Quest Bars, you'll feel like you're cheating, but you're not. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Quest High Protein Potato Chip banner ad today and get ready to be satisfied. Thanks to Quest Nutrition, chips just aren't what they used to be. For the best in real world, no-nonsense, result-producing, and effective strength training, muscle-building, and physical culture information, read Brooks Cubic's books and courses. Don't delay. Spread on over to brookscubic.com and choose from more than a dozen of the best books and courses on the market. Brooks Cubic's training advice has been building strength, transforming physical and changing lives for more than 25 years. If you prefer ebooks, look for Brooks Cubic's best selling courses at Amazon's Kindle Bookstore. Show your support for Physical Culture Radio by going to brookscubic.com right now. The secret word is kettlebell. Email that in to onair at superhumanradio.com to be entered for this week's secret word contest. And good luck. Superhuman Radio has the smartest and most dedicated health and fitness listeners found anywhere in the world. If you're trying to tap this market of greater than 50 million health fitness consumers, you simply can't do better than advertising on Superhuman Radio. Our sponsors tell us Superhuman Radio outperforms other forms of advertising time and time again. If you're tired of wasting valuable advertising dollars and need a new way to build your client base, go to superhumanradio.com and click on the Advertise With Us link. It just may be the best thing you have ever done for your business. If you take curcumin, you need to pay attention. The best curcumin on earth is metacurcumin. Metacurcumin is up to 277 times more bioavailable and absorbs over six times faster than standard curcumin supplements. Metacurcumin even outperforms those supposedly high-performance curcumin products. There's only one metacurcumin by Rev Genetics. You could save 20% off metacurcumin by clicking the banner ad at superhumanradio.com and use superhuman curcumin at checkout. If you want to help stop in Inflammation in its tracks. You need metacurcumin by Rev Genetics today. Eat dessert again with the new 100% natural line of high protein, low carb Quest protein bars. I love lemon cream pie and strawberry cheesecake, but you can choose from chocolate peanut butter, coconut cashew, or cinnamon roll as well. No matter which one you try, you'll feel like you're eating dessert. But this is no ordinary dessert. With 20 grams of high quality whey protein isolate, 17 grams of prebiotic fiber, and sweetened with stevia, these bars will make you feel like you're cheating, but you're not. Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Quest Protein Bar banner ad to learn more about these clean and delicious protein bars. Bluebird Botanicals sources only the highest quality CBD extracts from hemp. CBD is a non-psychoactive, all-natural constituent used to bolster general health. Bluebird Botanicals performs third-party testing, has invested in state-of-the-art manufacturing equipment, delivers nationwide, and possesses industry-leading customer service. To get CBD delivered to your front door, Go to superhumanradio.com, click the Bluebird Botanicals banner ad, and save 25% off with code SHR25. Bluebird Botanicals, setting the standard for CBD oil and extracts. This is the Superhuman Channel, where we use oxygen for the power of good. Welcome back to Science for Humans with Dr. Jeff Galini, my co-host, revealing the secrets of Muscle Beach building a barn door wide back. What do you think about um, T bar rows and all those sort of things with the uh, machines? Uh, you think they're effective, or you just uh, think a barbell bent over row is a better choice? You know, <clears throat> back when we were training, um, even though Gold's Gym had the latest equipment, because all the equipment people wanted to put their equipment in Gold's because they knew somebody would be in town to see it. Um, I think nowadays some of the equipment is really, really good. Um, so, you know, when I'm talking about my back exercises, that doesn't mean that all the other exercises are no good because I incorporated a variety of exercises. These were kind of my core pro- uh, core things that I did. But I did like T-Bar. Um, back in the day, a T-Bar to us, um, <laughs> Pete Kromkowski uh, drilled a hole in the wall in the corner and he put like a bracket and literally – made a cross um and it just laid on the floor and we would stack plates on there and uh t-bar row uh nowadays my gym has some very nice t-bar rows where um you know you're on a nice bench you're on an incline but again i think those are great exercises you know those are similar to a bent over row normally they're um they're on an incline 
you know, normally you're not bent over, you're slightly up. So again, you're just putting the emphasis on a slightly different uh, angle to that muscle. Okay, what about the rear delts? Do you have to do anything special for the rear delts, you think, on back day, or do you think all of these pulling movements at different angles hit the rear delts uh, adequately? Well, for me, I was on a three-on-one-off, Carl, and that meant uh, the first day of the cycle was pull. So it was back, rear delts, and biceps. So the rear delts moved, you know, flowed perfectly uh, into that back workout. Um, and then I would finish up with the lower back, which we'll talk about. But for rear delts, um, there's a variety of movements. You know, kind of the one that I see most of the people doing are behind the neck um, presses. And those are good. But what I liked was a more controlled, um, you sit at a bench, you bend over, you try to keep your back parallel to the ground, you've got dumbbells, and you are doing bent over dumbbells kind of like a fly but a reverse mm -hmm. movement right uh and you would come up with those now you know our gym has some great uh machines that duplicate that movement and i think those work just as good as um as those uh bent over uh flies rose uh, i forget what we even called those things <laughs> i think they i think they were called uh, uh bent over flies i think they were i think that's they were real yeah, delt flies we were kind of in, we were kind of inventing most of these exercises uh you know if, if arnold didn't do it then it was something new you know um but i usually finished up with about you know five sets of that i didn't overdo it because that that body part you know isn't a very big body part it's important um arnold used to say there's no excuse for weak delts so you didn't, do need that muscle to tie in, um, but you don't need to overwork it. Um, it normally grows pretty good with a lot of your back exercises. So what about the lower back? How do you hit that lower back specifically? So deadlifts, you know, are definitely hitting that lower back, but I like good old um, extensions, um, and they still make the, the benches that you, you know, hook your legs under, and now you are perpendicular out, and you're going to lower, bend down, you know, toward the floor, and you're going to come back up. Um, when you come up, you got to squeeze your butt muscle because if you can flex that butt muscle, you are tensing up your entire back. Um, 25 reps, you know, you got to do a few more reps. And when that becomes very easy, then what you do is you start with a 10 pound weight and you basically uh, put it in your arms, cross your arms, and now you will come up with that extra weight. Um, normally, we'd work up to about a 45-pound plate. And I would finish up with about uh, five sets of those, and again, doing about 25 reps. Um, and that would be kind of the finish to tying in that whole back. But again, you know, if you're in the sport, it's about looking in the mirror and critiquing yourself. You know, don't look at what looks good look at what you're lacking in and if you become good at that you will be very good in the sport because you'll be able to see oh you know what i need a little bit of this so like a sculptor you need to now um, change your workout to put the emphasis on that part so maybe like there was a period carl on my cycle where my biceps were lagging i actually did my biceps first before my back workout um, once those biceps got up to where I was comfortable, then I went back to doing them at the end. But again, when you do a long workout like that, sometimes people, whatever you do last, kind of become, oh, okay, I gotta now do some biceps. So, so, um, so do you, when you train biceps first, should you expect to be a little bit weaker in these other movements? The back movements? Um, I did not find myself weaker, you know, at all. I mean, I found that, um, I was able to concentrate on buys. Refuel and go into um, go into the back movements, and it didn't hinder um, at all. Same way when you and I are talking about doing hamstrings, people think that that's going to hinder your squat. Ah, it doesn't affect your strength no. at all. No. So no. you got to get used to it. Maybe the first time or two that you you switch things up, and that's the other thing is you got to change things up. So even though I would say this is my primary back movement. About every three workouts, I would do something different just to kind of mix it up a little bit, not only to, to kind of keep the workout exciting, um, but to shock those muscles, you know, do something uh, normally that you wouldn't do. This is exciting, you know, and I have to tell you, doing a hamstring curls first does not impede my ability to train legs. 
Uh, and I definitely see for the first time some changes in my hamstrings. And, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta think that your approach to looking at your back and being brave enough to zero in on your weak spots, then prime, pri- uh, prioritizing those weak spots as the first thing you do in back training and then going to everything else really makes a lot of sense from a bodybuilding perspective because it's all about bringing up your weaknesses in bodybuilding. Absolutely. And it's like any athlete in any sport. I mean, if you identify a weakness, you need to work on that weakness. You know, if you're having trouble, um, dribbling with your left hand, you don't continue to work on your right. You got to work on your left. Yeah. You know, yeah. bodybuilding, your whole body is your sport. So you've got to be able, like I said, to critique yourself. And if you have trouble, get a friend and have them help you evaluate yourself. But you can learn to do it yourself. Um, and then you will be the best, uh, that you can be if you can do that, you know, and be honest with yourself. If you'd like to send a question to Dr. Jeff, we have a place on the Superhuman Radio website. On the bottom right-hand side, you'll see a banner ad that says Ask the Scientist. You can ask him a question about training, ask him a question about supplementation, or ask him for some free samples of Crealkaline, the only patented buffered creatine monohydrate product in the world, uh, and or uh, um, Carbolin, which is an amazing uh, carbohydrate product that will fuel your workouts and make you train harder. Everybody who uses Carbolin says the same thing. They no longer hit the wall. Uh, ask for Absolutely. some samples. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Stuff. And you know, I, and I'm new now to, uh, Facebook. So if you guys are Facebook people, um, you want to follow me, go to Dr. Jeff Galini. I'm trying to post, uh, some interesting things on there. Um, not only things that are happening with me, but, uh, tours of the production facility. Um, I'm doing a weekly, um, tip of the week um so go like my page and uh if you got a question like carl said shoot it away because this whole month is about answering questions that have come in and carl they're all basically kind of training and diet related how about Isn't that, that huh? great who knew right who knew i know thanks a lot dr jeff we'll see you next week brother thank you